Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be going through this new OCBC survey because it has quite a bit of findings for Singaporeans and if it impacts you and you have thoughts about it, yeah, this video is definitely for you. So let's dive onto it. And before we start, I actually like to share with you, I actually do not believe anybody who is wealthy is going to do this survey. So we should assume that everybody else is part of their survey group in this 2000 and that, you know, if if you are not as bad as it seems based on this, there's nothing to celebrate also. But let's dive on to it and find out a bit better. Now, I'll, uh, as I speak to you on this uh, direction, I'll also be pulling up the chart for you so that you can follow through along on some of the discussion points that we'll be seeing. And if it's something you haven't heard before, then definitely take notes about it. The first thing is about bad habits. Uh, and as you can see over here, 29% of guys and 39% of ladies actually do not stick closely to a budget and i actually find this quite uh, amusing because do you actually have a budget yourself do you actually follow a tight budget yourself i don't i have a rough budget and i really don't think uh, you know uh, that many people follow the budget two-thirds of people follow the budget i find it a bit difficult to believe and in any case in those two-thirds Maybe a travel trip will have disrupted the whole budget. Maybe an unforeseen circumstances will have disrupted the whole budget. So I think this two-third of people having a, a budget is a bit unbelievable. We go on to the next point about one-third of people, 33% of ladies, paying only the minimum credit card bills. Now, this is a bit hard to believe. Because if a person is only paying minimum for credit card bills, that means the person, if it's you, do not have emergency fund do not have like some savings behind because credit card charges are about the highest uh, interest rates that you'll be paying you should always clear that off now having said that i actually think that there's two categories of people that would not be able to pay uh, you know this this credit card bill they're only paying the minimum the first category of people based on my experience is someone who is a lower income range Someone's earning less than 2500 and I've actually had this experience. I've met a couple who actually do not earn that much and we met in Coffee Bean and they were dining there and one meal is easily $40-$50. Now, that is, that is quite hard to solve if you are in that situation or if, if, if it's someone that is having this uh, mindset issue because if you overspend on everything, naturally you do not have the ability to pay off your bills. It all relates together. You spend excessively in meals, you spend excessively in transport, you'll be taking taxis all the time, and you don't prioritize paying off bills well enough. And that is a big mindset problem. The other category of people that pay only the minimum bills, and it's quite easy to solve, is those that are drawing a higher income. I've also known some, especially those in banking, whereby there's a lot of lifestyle spending. And that is actually much easier to solve. It all takes a determined approach to change lifestyle and to make sure that savings come in and credit card bills are removed away totally. We move, move on to the third point over here. Excessively speculate for quick gains. This is a bit hard to believe because I think maybe it's the word excessively. A lot of people speculate. Even I speculate on certain investments. I sold off my extra bond after I got allocated units to it. I, I did not intend to hold on to it for a long period of time. Maybe it's the word excessive, but I do believe that a lot of people just buy based on price actions, more than definitely more than one third of people, and that a lot are looking for quick gains. The fourth point: twenty percent or so people spend a large extent all above their means to keep up with their peers. Now, um, what does that mean? Spend a large amount. I, I mean, who would admit it? Who would admit that they are spending just to keep up with their peers? It is something that is very close to heart, something that's an identity thing. And is, is spending on makeup excessive? Is spending on good clothing, few hundred pieces, few hundred dollars piece of clothes uh, excessive? To keep our peers because your peers are looking good you are looking to dress well so is that excessive or is is something that is more difficult to admit like buying a big car like buying a big house that is you know uh, more difficult 
for someone to actually say to actually admit that they are spending above their means to keep up their peers because they see their peers driving a BMW or Mercedes, they are looking to get a good car. They see their peers living in condominium, they are looking to upgrade. So I do believe that there's actually a, a lot more people that refuse to admit they are spending above their means to keep up their peers. Definitely more than this 21% or 19% that you see over there. The last point, 11% of guys borrow money from their friends or relatives, 13%. And on first glance, I actually trust this. That means that their OCBC is sampling across different income ranges. And if someone borrows from friends or relatives, I think this is a very clear-cut low-income situation. I've seen all walks of life and someone who's drawing a higher income will find other means of borrowing. They'll be in the second category of borrowing on credit cards. It's only this 11 or 13 percent of people who are in the low income range and they they don't have access to credit and they are looking to borrow from friends and relatives let's move on to the next point 60 percent of age 30s are married okay that is probable uh, but it also doesn't factor in that that thing that in the next part of journey i've seen also those in 40s there's a lot of divorce situations and maybe 30s is a honeymoon so if you are married, uh, work hard at keeping your, your marriage because it's not a given that it can last forever. You need to constantly put in the work and that's what I do also for my own marriage. Next part, 51% of people service a mortgage. Okay. Uh, but 30% are having trouble paying off the monthly housing loan installment. I, I find this quite hard to believe because if, if someone, if you have CPF, you're pay, probably paying off your mortgage using CPF. You should have a stash inside CPF that, that can buffer you. And that I, I guess anyone with one mortgage, even with one income source, it's also not difficult to pay off their mortgage. I, I think this 30% having trouble paying off their monthly installment is a bit unbelievable. I think it's, it should be way lower. Maybe this 30% are uh, people who have bought multiple properties like business owners or even property agents I, I know of property agents who buy three or five properties in different names and that they are all relying on rental income to cover the monthly installment and maybe in that situation then yes if there's no rental coming in then there's a problem paying off the monthly installment the third point 31% having unsecured debt okay this relates to the previous slide whereby there's people, uh, there's one third of people paying only the minimums for credit card. Then yes, 31% can have unsecured debt. Now let's move on to the next part over here. 69% have investment products. Huh. I, I think this, this, this part on investments is a bit hard to believe. I think more than 69% of people have investments done before. They have been to banks, they have met financial advisors. It's hard to believe that only 69% of age 30s have invested before. Uh, but a big question that I have for you is having investments is one thing. Having a good enough, having a meaningful enough investment is another thing. Is having $3,000 or $5,000 invested good enough? Is doing only CPF investments good enough? Because that will qualify as 69% that have invested before. So think about that. The bigger question that you need to look, look at is having a right meaningful amount that's invested. And, me, and if the question is phrased that way, I'm sure the percentages will be a lot lower. A meaningful amount depends on your life stage, depends on your age, but quite clearly that amount needs to be at least five figures for it to be meaningful. Now, 55% of people, the next part, have regular passive income. Now, this is a bit... This is a bit weird because 69% have investment products. 55% have regular passive income. Does that mean that you know this difference of 14% only invested in CPF and SRS where there is no passive income? Or they bought stuff like land banking that does not have passive income? If not, that amount should be a lot closer in my opinion. The last point. Review yearly with a financial plan of 54% and I'm actually quite surprised by this because I, I thought it should be a lot higher. There are financial advisors everywhere. I work as a professional financial planner myself and 
I'm, I'll be surprised if, if someone has not met a financial advisor in the last one year. And usually the circumstance is someone who's an expat or maybe someone who's a naturalized Singaporean. I've, I've that in my private client list also. Uh, they don't have a network of close friends and relatives. They are, they are doing financial planning and want to review with them on a yearly basis. But the main thing that I would like to share with you is actually this. You should not rely on a yearly review of a financial planner. You should look at looking at your own finances on a monthly basis. Are you tabulating out your monthly assets? Tabulating out your monthly expenses? Having a rough budget. You know at the start of the video I said nobody has a proper budget. But having a rough budget needs to be in there. You need to look at your income growth or your asset growth on a month to month basis. Because that is what I hear of when I listen to top top entrepreneurs, listen to top uh, investors. They look at their balance sheet on a month-to-month -month basis, if not even shorter. Let's move on to the next part. Those who find it tough supporting both parents and children in their 30s. Uh, I'm in this situation. Although my parents are self-sufficient, uh, I still have to support my kid. And this first part, 31% having problems teaching their children about money. Okay, if that applies to you, fantastic. I have a lot of material on it. I'm on Instagram sharing how I teach my kid about uh, money. So if you are interested to find out, go to find Josh underscore Tan underscore the astute parent on IG. I'll have a lot of pictures there and a lot of simple sharing. And if it is content that you yourself, you as a parent are looking for, Leave them in the comment sections below so that I know I can create content on teaching kids about money that would really impact you. The next part, 39% are concerned about not being able to match peers' lifestyle. Is that a similar question to the one before? Let me look at it. Uh, yes, 21% spend a large extent of their income to keep up their peers. Hmm, so this is a similar thing. And if you, if you are concerned about not being able to match up to your peers' lifestyle. It's actually very simple. The solution is all about social media. If you are concerned about matching a peers' lifestyle, quit social media. Don't go on the Facebook, don't go on the Instagram if it makes you feel uh, inferior, it makes you feel uncomfortable. And you know, if this matching peers' lifestyle is a self-esteem thing, you're not happy with it, uh, it needs fixing because it's it's a money image thing and my suggestion offhand is you need to show a lot more gratitude in where you are you have this amount of income may not be a lot uh, but if you compare to someone in a developing country in Malaysia or Indonesia definitely it looks a lot if you have only a small house hey uh, people in other countries do not have a proper housing uh, there are many in Singapore they are living in rented flat so show some gratitude. Uh, naturally, that, that helps you rebalance. But this is a this is a big this is a big issue that cannot be solved in in one or two. It needs to be a, a regular practice. And again, yeah, showing gratitude. That's something that I truly believe that can help you in that direction. Next part: seventy four percent are worried that economy is not improving in the next twelve months. Uh, this is actually very true. I hear this from my private clients all the time. And uh, that's actually one answer that I, I need to share with you right now as, as just a very transparent uh, communication method. That it's not really the economy, it's about you. Uh, don't worry about the economy. Economy goes up, economy goes down. In good economies, people get retrenched. In bad economies, people get pay raises. So look at you, don't worry about the economy. And for myself, I mean, I, I run my business in financial planning. Economy is bad. I'm not going to look at economy and worry hard. There's, there's, there's a bonus cut in all my private clients. I look at improving my skill sets all the time to deliver a higher value. So again, it's not economy, it's about you. So this point of here, 48%. Now, 48% uh, don't know the best way to grow their money. Huh? I, I don't quite like this question don't know the best best way to grow their money L let me ask you this question what is the best way to grow your money are you are you thinking of shortcuts hey josh maybe 
invest in this that you multiply your, your income you multiply your net worth by 10 times are you looking for hidden secrets on how to make more income that there really is no best way to grow the money i don't like this question or rather the answer is pretty simple work hard think about increasing your value all the time be it in your own business be it in your corporation add value to your corporation and then invest and then invest 50 percent at least of your income with patience that is just the best way of growing money there's no there's no shortcut to it next 63 percent of people are concerned about not being able to spend comfortably beyond the basics now this is an expectation problem comfortably beyond the basics let, let me illustrate let me illustrate this to you if you if i covered my hand across your mouth like that and i'm preventing you from breathing what would you do you you push my hand away correct and and that's because you want to breathe you want it badly you're not going to let me cover your mouth until you are really out of breath or until you you are suffocated you definitely push my hand away now let me ask you this question if you are really keen to spend comfortably beyond the basics it's how badly you want if you want more income go and work at it if you want more savings tweak your lifestyle it depends on how hard you want and uh, if 63 percent are not comfortable with it, the answer i've given already it's how badly you want next and final point 22 percent or, or rather this is only for those with unsecured debt 20, 22 percent are not on target paying off unsecured debt and actually uh, this is very simple it's if you don't have unsecured debt there's no need to explore in it if you have unsecured debt clear it as soon as possible correct so i hope this quick quick review on this ocbc survey has shed certain light because i've spoken to many people in different walks of life in my work uh, i have certain interpretations maybe you've only sp spoke to a certain network of families friends colleagues but i've seen many walks of life and i think some of my feedback uh, it's based on my experience talking to different people. Now, if you like this reaction video, leave them, leave a comment in the section below on what, what else you want me to review on so that I know what content works for you. And as always, subscribe also because I'll be launching videos every week that can help you financially. And till then, I'll see you again.